Thank you very much for inviting me to be a speaker in this International Diabetes Symposium. And I'm going to talk about the five Ds. And the five Ds are diabetes, denial, dementia, depression, and diabolemia. And let me start with diabetes denial. And denial is that voice inside repeating, not me. Most people with diabetes go through denial when they are first diagnosed with diabetes. They say, I don't believe it. There must be some mistake. Denial is a psychological state in which one feels exempt from reality. Denial in diabetes is either an individual who has diabetes, but in denial about it, ignoring his disease by not controlling it. He does not test his blood glucose regularly. He eats whatever he wants and he's not following a strict diet and he does not see the doctor when he should. Another type of denial in diabetes is someone who may be a diabetic, but who hasn't or doesn't want to get tested. This person frequently goes to the bathroom, has soothed, usually fatigued, and is experiencing numbness and tingling in his legs, hands, or feet. Why to deny? Sometimes denial serves a purpose. It's a way of coping with bad news. It can keep the patient from getting overwhelmed and depressed. It lets patients accept news little by little when they are ready. This is the message to the patient, but denying that you are a diabetic is serious. It lets you avoid self-care. It shields you from the fact that diabetes is a lifelong chronic illness which if left untreated can result in complications. Denial also lets your family and friends pretend that nothing is wrong. The hidden danger in diabetes denial that these patients are not testing, they are ignoring meal plan and they are forgetting feed care. How to avoid denial? To avoid denial, uh, these are some uh, um, suggestions to write down your diabetes plan uh, of care and your health care goals, and to understand why each item in this plan is important. To accept, it will take time to reach your goals, and if you have trouble with your food plan, to, uh, talk to a registered dietitian and tell your friends and family how they can help you and encourage you to uh, reach your plan. They might also want to adapt some of your healthy habits. Uh, dementia, this is the second D in diabetes and dementia. Uh, the senility is not the normal aging. Senility means dementia and dementia is a clinical syndrome characterized by insidious onset and slow progression of cognitive impairment, impairing at least two areas of cognitive function. For example, memory loss, impaired verbal fluency, impaired executive function, extra. And this is American Psychiatric Association. They has established two generally accepted criteria for the diagnosis of dementia. The first one is erosion of recent and remote memory. And the second criteria is impairment of one or more of the following cognitive functions, like language, misuse of words or inability to remember or use words correctly, aphasia, motor activity, unable to perform motor activities, even though physical ability remains intact, apraxia, recognition, unable to recognize objects, even though sensory function is intact, agnosia, executive function, unable to plan, organize, or think. Symptoms often develop gradually and show a progressive deterioration in function. Dr. Alois Alzheimer in 1907 examined the brain of a 55-year-old woman 
She had died after a rapid downhill course of premature senility or dementia, and he discovered distorted, twisted protein fragments in place of normal protein cells, neurofibratory tangles, later became known as Alzheimer's disease. Diabetes is a risk factor for uh, dementia, doubles the risk actually of dementia. And this is um, the Fremantle study done in Australia, uh, compared those with dementia between the age of 70, 74, 75 to, nine, to 79, and above the age of 80. And about, about the age of 80, Dementia was found in 27% of cases compared to 8 to 11% in the normal Australian survey. And depression also uh, was 14% compared to 2% in the Australian survey. These are the risk factors for dementia. Diabetes and depression are independent risk factors for vascular and Alzheimer dementia. And effective treatment of depression and diabetes may be one of the most powerful interventions to decrease the prevalence of dementia. This study was on a prospective study of uh, almost um, 10,000 patients aged uh, 65 to 92 years, they are uh, diabetic patients. And in this study, women with diabetes experienced an accelerated cognitive uh, decline. And as a study done on more than 6,000 subjects above the age of 55, and they are dementia free at the baseline and followed for an average of two years, and patients on insulin were at higher risk for dementia. These are the possible pathophysiological mechanisms linking diabetes with um, changes in the brain. And diabetes, together with genetic predisposition and comorbidity medications, lead to macrovascular uh, disease and cerebral infarcts microvascular disease with insidu insidious ischemia, hyperglycemia, advanced protein glycation, oxidative stress, and mitochondrial dysfunction, recurrent hypoglycemia, hyperinsulinemia, and insulin resistance. All these factors will lead to vascular pathology, aging pathology, and Alzheimer pathology, eventually leading to dementia. This study was done comparing um, females and males with or without metabolic syndrome, and the risk of Alzheimer disease in elderly uh, females with uh, metabolic syndrome was highly increased relative to those without metabolic syndrome, but this uh, association was not found in uh, males with or without metabolic syndrome. Now the uh, diabetes and depression, and depression is a common and serious disease often leading to suicide, and suicide rate is double the homicide rate in the United States, and usually these patients uh, feel uh, all the time um, um, thoughts about uh, death. Depression will be the second cause of disability worldwide and number one cause of disability in developing countries. And these are facts about depression and the percentage of population who experience depression in their lifetime uh, is 10% in males and 20% in females. These are the odds and prevalence of depression in uh, 18 control trials, the odds of depression were doubled in diabetics compared to control. Diabetes and depression and diabetes complications uh, was also uh, linked to any type of complication or specific complications like retinopathy, neuropathy, and nephropathy where depression uh, was uh, increased in these uh, complications. But does depression increase the risk of diabetes or not? And 
there is a bidirectional relationship. In depressed person, the risk of developing diabetes has been shown to be twice that of non-depressed persons. Depression doubles the risk of type 2 diabetes. This was found in many studies. And for uh, coronary heart disease occurrence in diabetics with depression and coronary heart disease occurs in 39% of diabetics with depression. What's the effect of depression treatment on hemoglobin A1C? And depression treatment and remission reduces hemoglobin A1C by 0.8 to 1.2% as if we are giving uh, another anti-diabetic medication. These are the symptoms of depression and they include persistently sad, anxious or empty mood, feeling of hopelessness, pessimism, feeling of guilt, worthlessness, uh, helplessness, loss of interest or pleasure that were enjoyed, including sex. Decreased energy, fatigue, being slowed down, difficulty concentrating and remembering, insomnia, early awakening or oversleeping. Appetite or weight changes and restlessness and irritability. Thoughts of death or suicide or suicidal attempts. And if five or more of these symptoms are present every day for at least two weeks, interfering with routine daily activities such as work, self-care and child care or social life, seek an evaluation for depression. A study was done on five groups of diabetics uh, the first group was diet and exercise alone. The second group was oral medications. Third group, oral hypoglycemic agents with insulin. Fourth group, two injections insulin per day. And the fifth group was three or more insulin injections per day. And this study was published in the American Diabetes Association. And there was strong correlation between depressive symptoms and glycemic control in patients with complex insulin regime, three or more injections per day. To optimize management of diabetes with depression, we should do an initial evaluation and to evaluate depression as a contributor to the development of type two diabetes or depression as a contributor to poor metabolic control in any type of diabetes, and to test the clinically for significant de depression and to maintain a prescription for relapsing depression. This is the role of diabetologists in patient education. Lift your spirits, join a support group, share your thoughts and feelings with others who have also the disease and learn new skills to cope better. Keep a journal of good things in life and uh, other thoughts, write down uh, a poem or prayer that has meaning to you. Write out the many blessings that happen each day and go back and read these things whenever you are feeling blue. Plan an enjoyable day doing something you like, go shopping, uh, work in a garden, go for a, work, uh, for a walk in uh, the park, or have lunch with a friend or go to a comic movie. What about exercise? Exercise, just moving can work wonders for the way you feel. Talk to family or friends. Sharing your feeling can help release built up emotions and get their support for needed changes. Volunteer help, volunteering help us feel good about ourselves, that we are making a difference in someone else's life. And let me uh, finish my presentation with diabolemia. And diabolemia is a serious condition when type 1 diabetic are not taking their insulin in order to lose weight. Diabolemia is a term that only cropped up in recent years. Most people who experience diabolemia are stuck between two fears, taking increasing doses of insulin 
which leads to weight gain and the damage that destructive behavior is causing their body in long term. It is a psychological and a medical condition. Hypolemia is a practice of lowering or completely omitting insulin as a way of losing weight and staying healthy. One expert who has studied the phenomenon estimated that there is 450,000 type 1 diabetic women in the United States uh, omitting uh, insulin or skipping uh, doses of insulin in order to lose weight. They are risking a coma and an early death. They are between uh, two uh, sides they are saying complications are inevitable. Women with type 1 diabetes are twice as likely to develop an eating disorder than those without type 1 diabetes. The risk of eating disorders coupled with type 1 diabetes are significant. At the end, uh, do diabetic patients need more psychological support this remains to be elucidated. Thank you very much.